Hey guys, today we're in my living room and we are going to talk about seed packets. Specifically, we're going to talk about reading seed packets, which was something that I really found to be a little bit of a learning curve when I started growing things from seeds. I thought that first of all, growing things from seeds would be really intimidating. And so I was very, very nervous to start. And I find that it's one of those things that holds a lot of people back from gardening or you know it's one of those things where maybe they grow a garden for a few years but they feel like they can't start from seeds so they buy all their plants every year and there's nothing wrong with that like if you like buying your plants do that um, I think it's a great thing to do especially if you can find like local mom and pop places to to buy from or like nurseries and stuff like that but honestly like if you buy your entire garden from a big box store every year that's awesome because you're still growing a garden all of it counts but I have found that people like feel like they're not real gardeners or something like that if they don't grow from seed, which I don't think that's true. I think if you are trying to grow stuff, then you get to call yourself a gardener and that's awesome. Before I get too far into this, if you're new here, my name is Kiera, feel free to call me Q. And uh, this video is gonna go with kind of a, a getting started beginner gardener mini series that I'm doing. And basically what I'm covering in these videos is all the stuff that I had a lot of questions about when I was starting to garden. Um, this is gonna be like my, I'm going into my fifth year, technically my fourth real year. Uh, we'll just say four, uh, cause we had one year where we were like moving and stuff. So I've grown a garden, a pretty sizable garden now, especially last year we grew 700 pounds of food. And so I'm not an expert by any means, but I know a few things and I've learned a few things. And so with this video series, I really just wanted to help me when I was starting out because there were these like terms and jargon and like all this stuff that I found to be very confusing when I was trying to figure out what stuff was and also trying to do it the right way. Um, I got very caught up in that. I do wanna make a case for this really quick because a lot of people, like I said, feel like they can't do this. You totally can, like 100% you can do this. There are a lot of amazing reasons why you might wanna start from seeds. One is you can grow a lot more plants for a lot cheaper because, you know, for me, a little six cell of plants at the local nursery or whatever can be like five or six bucks. Sometimes one plant is five or six bucks. And, you know, or I can get a seed packet for like two to four bucks and there's anywhere from like 15 to sometimes there's hundreds of seeds in one seed packet. And so there's the cost savings there. Yes, seed starting can, you know, take some investment as far as like whatever setup you wanna have. Like we have an indoor grow lights station and yeah, we've invested in like seed starting materials and all of that. Some people invest in greenhouses, but like you don't, you don't need all of that stuff. Like you 100% don't, depending on where you can live, you can start seeds outside, you can you know do it really cheaply. There's so many different ways you can do it. If you are interested in that, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on just all of that <laughs> and just the ways that I've done it and I've seen people do it. So it doesn't have to be super expensive unless you know it's something that you wanna invest in. Another huge reason to start from seeds is that the variety is just so much better because when you go to like a nursery or a box store, they're selling a very limited selection of things because they have to sell the things that are gonna sell, right? Like they're trying to make money. And so they're not going to have all of these like really weird, strange varieties or cool things. You know, they're gonna predominantly sell the things that a lot of people will buy. And so it's gonna be kind of the more like mainstream things, which is fine. Like, I think that that is great. Like buy those things too. I think that gardening, all of the gardening, all of the growing food, it's all awesome. But if you are looking for something that is a little more interesting or colorful or just giving yourself more reasons to enjoy the hobby more, which is where I'm in. Like I want things that are gonna be like beautiful or interesting or something I've never tried before because it's it's a lot of work, you know? And so anything that I can do to kind of like keep myself in the game is what I wanna do. And that's where seeds, growing from seed is gonna be amazing for you because there's just so many different varieties out there available when you're talking about buying seed packets versus started plants. 
And the other thing about seed starting is I think people have this misconception that like their seedlings have to be perfect in order to like be, you know, fruitful or to, for them to get any harvest. And I can be a living example that that's not the case. <laughs> um, I have seedlings that look rough sometimes, most of the time. My seedlings are not great. It's something that I'm still like, they get better and better every year, but it is something that I'm still working on. I am not the person that has like the beautiful lush seedlings that go out in the garden, but we still end up with a beautiful garden that grows a lot of food. So do not let that stop you. Do not let the fact that you don't think you can do it perfectly keep you from doing it at all. And when I say that, I'm really just talking to myself. So, you know, <laughs> if you think I'm talking to you too, that's fine. <laughs> so what I have here is I have three different seed packets and um, I just got these from, these are three of the companies that I buy a lot from. So I have Botanical Interests, that's a big one. Um, they recently got bought by uh, Kevin over at Epic Gardening. Baker Creek, they sell heirloom seeds. Their stuff is amazing, I love it. And then one that's new to me, but not new to a lot of people is Am I Gardener? Luke has a YouTube channel, started as a YouTuber, and I've heard really amazing things about his seed company. And so I'm actually growing a lot of his varieties this year. What I did is I grabbed these three because I wanted to just kind of give you examples of what these seed packets look like and the differences on what you can find and just like how to find the information and how to use the information, which is most important. So when I first got started, I wanted all of the companies to put the same information on here. <laughs> and I wanted them to all put the information that I needed because I didn't know what I needed. And so I was hoping that they did the lead work for me. And if I couldn't find something, it was kind of debilitating for me because I like just didn't know what to do. But the thing is, is like which e with each company, one, they're gonna put different things on because they have different designs. They're also all gonna figure out that like different things are important. Some have more information than others. Uh, some have more information on their websites, but know that all of the information that you need to grow a tomato is there. Like from the seed packets or, you know, Google, your University of Google, like all of it is there. And then there's YouTube where people will actually walk you through the steps of what it looks like to grow the tomatoes. So this is something that you can 100% do. And they all they all kind of have like, you know, the 80-20 rule. It, they get you 80% of the way there. Like you'll, you'll have success even if you don't have all of the information on these packets. And that was something that I was worried about when I was starting was I didn't think I would be successful, but you, you totally will. Took a little break and now we're back. Andrew and the baby are outside on the patio enjoying some fresh air while I finish talking to you guys. So the first thing you're gonna wanna know whenever you're wanting to start plants from seeds is you wanna know your first and last frost dates. So I made a video about this going over hardiness zones, annual versus perennial plants, what that means and first and last frost dates and basically like what you can do with all that information and why it's actually useful for you. Um, so you can go ahead and check out that video. I'll link it down below. But for this, just know that you can Google it. So you can put in your city and then fr first frost date or last frost date is really what you wanna know for starting things for spring and summer gardens. Or you can do your zip code and then the words last frost date and it'll give you some results. One of them will probably be Farmer's Almanac, which is a good one that I look at. And it's a good place to kind of start. Now, it is an estimate um, and you might decide to like start things later than that. Like that's not the only date. So if you like don't start your seeds by, your fro by when it says within weeks of your last frost date, you have not like missed your opportunity or anything like that. And sometimes it's actually better to wait. Um, I go into that a lot into in that other video. So feel free to check that out. But anyway, you're going to want to have an idea of when your last frost date is because a lot of seed packets on the back will say things like start indoors and then it will say like this in my gardener one, six to eight weeks before last frost date. So what you'll do is you'll look up your last frost date um, have that date in mind, and then you want, if it says six to eight weeks before your last frost date, then you want to count back six to eight weeks. And so you can do that mentally. You can type into Google six weeks before, and then whatever the date is, 
you can get like a chart from Farmer's Almanac that'll tell you like when to plant stuff. What I do is I put all of that into the spreadsheet. I actually like just decided to make a spreadsheet where I just put in my frost date or, you know, the date that I want all my plants to go outside. And then I put in all the formulas. So it just calculates all that stuff for me. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, I'm happy to share it with you. Check out the links down below and you can just grab it there. But yeah, there's lots of ways to do this. You can wait until it is warm enough after your frost date, after your last frost date, you can wait to just plant them directly outside, but you, are missing out on all that season extension that you would have if you put a plant that was like this tall outside in the correct in the right temperature then it's just going to shoot up you're going to get your fruit much faster you're going to get a lot more harvest usually uh, some people have shorter seasons right so it makes a lot of sense to start your seeds indoors before it is warm enough to put them outside or you know start them in a greenhouse or whatever your system is and so that those plants get a head start so that by the time you put them outside, uh, either you get more harvest or depending on where you live, you get a harvest at all, right? So like my growing season is like 300 days or something like that. Like we can grow anytime basically throughout the year. And our winter is where it's actually like cold and considered winter, it's very short. But other people have like 60 day growing seasons I think a, I looked up Bend Oregon one time and I think their growing season is something like 60 to 90 days or something like that and so there's some things that are completely just like it doesn't make sense to try to grow them outside where you are but if you're growing things from seed growing starting them inside is a great way to get a jump start on your season so that you will have so much more success than if you had planted it directly outside now that being said other things, it is better to actually wait and plant them outside, depending on where you live also. So like for me, I don't plant zucchinis in advance anymore. Um, I wait until it's warm enough. I wait until, you know, my last frost has passed and then I just directly sow them outside um, in my garden. And that's another thing you're gonna see on seed packets is usually there is a start indoors date and then there's also a direct sow. And that basically means like putting a seed directly in the dirt, <laughs> in the soil outside in your garden. And that's when, you know, you're probably gonna wait a little bit longer so that the temperatures are ideal for that thing. Another thing that you're gonna see on a lot of packets is the number of seeds in the packet. So, this one on In My Gardener, it says approximate seed count, 25. Now this one says 25 seeds, but uh, it's an automated thing. So you'll have somewhere around 25. And they, they usually can get pretty close with machinery, but like, you know, don't be surprised if it's off by a couple. But that is something that's really good to know because then you know that like, okay, well, if there are 25 seeds in here, and then this one, Botanical Interest, they put their price right on here. This is $249, so you can figure out what you're paying per seed, essentially. And let's actually figure that out. So it's about like 10 cents a seed, we'll say. That compared to if you're buying a tomato start from a store, like it could be anywhere, usually between like three and five dollars for one plant. And this is 10 cents per per plant essentially and like yeah it takes more work to start them yourself when you buy a, a start you're paying for someone else who have already done all those steps for you plus markup so that they can make money but this is a great way to have a lot more plants in your garden because 25 seeds i mean like i'm just getting to the point where i could plant 25 roma plants in one year maybe but usually these will last me like a couple of years and so it's a really great way again to get more bang for your buck and then another thing that you will see on pretty much every seed packet it's usually on the back it's uh on one of the like labels here so this one's at the bottom here it's on baker creeks it's at the top here they will have these sell by dates if you see that, this is not the same as food. So a sell-by date is not an expiration date. I've had seed packets that I've grown for, like I said, many, many years. So 
if you buy brand new seeds, do not throw them away at the end of the season um, because most seeds, there are some exceptions to the rule, but most seeds are still good after a year. There are some things like onions, for instance, people say that it's better to just buy new seeds every year if you're gonna plant onions from seeds. Um, things that are pelleted don't last very long because the kind of like coating, the clay coating that they put the seeds in like degrades the seeds over time. But I mean, I'm of the mind of try anyway if you have it because then, you know, you might get something then that's better than nothing. And I will, what I'll do is like, I'll buy new seeds, but I'll also plant the old ones just to see what I get. I think it was in my gardener did an experiment where he like grew seeds that were in a shadow box. I think it was like 80 years old or something like that. So do not just throw them out. Now your germination might decline year after year. So if you have seeds that are a couple years old, Usually what that means is you'll wanna just like plant a few more seeds than you normally would just to make sure that you end up with the number of plants that you want. And then the other thing that you'll see on the In My Gardener seed packet, it says packed for, and then it has a year on it. And these other ones have like a lot number and it'll say packed for, and then it'll say a year on it. And usually that's the same year as the sell by. And the reason why those two things are on seed packets is because even though the seeds are still good. Seed companies are not legally allowed to sell you seeds that are more than a year old. And so they are only allowed to sell and put on, the, on their shelves seeds that are packed for that specific year. And then they have to get rid of them by the end of the year. There's a lot of different reasons for it. One of them is it just keeps companies honest, which means that you are always, when you're buying a brand new packet of seeds, you're always buying something that is the highest germination rate that they can give you. Some of them will even put percents on here. Like it'll say like 99% or 100% uh, germination rate or whatever. And that's just more marketing for them to tell you like how good the seeds are. But basically what it is, is you cannot go to the store and then buy seeds that are like five years old and not know, right? Because that company can't sell them to you. And so once you have that, then, uh, you're gonna see things like we talked about, the start indoors, transplant outside, direct sow, you know, and sometimes that'll be based on the weeks before or after your frost date. Sometimes it'll actually give you weather, like uh, degrees in temperature, which I really appreciate. For things like peppers, I found that I have the best success. Sure, I start them, you know, six to eight weeks before my last frost date, but I don't put them outside right after my last frost date. I actually wait until we have a certain temperature in the nights every single night, because I found that if I put my peppers out before that, the plants actually stunt and they do really poorly the entire season. And so I wait actually until our nights are consistently 50 degrees, and then I plant my peppers out there. And so that kind of stuff is really good to know. And some seed, com seed companies will actually put that on the package, which is fantastic. And then another thing that's helpful is like germination temperature, all that kind of stuff. So that's helpful if you are planting them inside or outside. So, you know, you can know, like in the case of peppers, if you are planting something outside, you know what to look for in your temperatures outside during the day and the night. But also it's really helpful for if you're starting stuff in your house, because like for us, we have had struggling success and failure, honestly. Like we used to keep our seed starting thing in our garage. Well, our garage got too cold. <laughs> and even with heat mats and stuff, things struggled we found that it was worth it for us to just move the entire seed starting thing into our house. And our house, because we have a baby, is always a consistent temperature and our seeds do really well in here. Now that might not always be the case, but usually your house is a little bit warmer than like a garage or an outbuilding or something like that. And so depending on what you're growing, your seeds will do better um, just because like they have the insulation of a house. And then if, you can't quite get them up to temperature, that's where things like heat mats and stuff come in handy. So another thing that you might see that's helpful is days to germinate. And so for instance, this tomato, it says five to 10 days to germinate. And that's helpful because it gives you a window of how long to wait before you start seeds, you start more seeds, right? So if this says five to 10 days, I might wait 15 days. And then after 15 days, if I've seen nothing from this tomato, I might start more of them or I might start something else. And then let's see, another thing that's on here that is really helpful is when you're looking at 
the amount of sun that a seed needs. That's a good one. If you see something like this in my gardener one, it doesn't say how many hours it needs. It just says that this plant needs full sun. And usually the ballpark for that is anything that is like six to eight hours of sun is considered full sun. Anything that is four to six hours is partial sun and anything that is four or less hours is usually considered shade, right? So when they say full sun, they don't usually mean that a plant needs more than eight hours. Now, if it gets more than eight hours, that's fine. Um, but that could be detrimental, right? Because like our summers get to be 100 degrees and our days are really, really long. So that's like 12 hours of sun. That's a lot of blinding sunshine and death rays. And sometimes like our plants burn. So it's good to know which plants are like heat loving and which ones, you know, are full sun, but maybe they could benefit from a little bit of being shaded by another plant or like shade in general because it's so hot in your area, like stuff like that. And that is stuff that you're always gonna just like learn with time and watching your garden. So don't feel like you need to know all of that right out of the gate. You don't, um, you will figure it out as you go and just like, really one solid year of just like observing your garden will solve so many of these questions for you and like give you answers for so many of these questions. But when you see those characters of like, oh, full sun, that's what that means. It doesn't mean that it needs to get 12 hours of sun or like, you know, as long as the sun is out in a day, it needs to get that. It also doesn't mean necessarily that it needs to get it every day. So if you have some cloudy days, it's like, it's no big deal, it's an average. And the next thing that you are gonna see that's really important is seed depth. So a lot of times they'll say things like this one is one eighth of an inch deep. And that is basically like how far into the soil do you need to plant the seed, whether you're direct sowing it or um, starting it in little trays inside your house. Now, a good rule of thumb for this is to go twice as deep as the seed is long or wide. So basically like two times the size of the seed. And that'll give you like a, a really good estimate of how far in to go. So like this tomato seed, let me see if I can grab one here, really, really small. And so I don't need to plant this super deep or anything. If you plant your seedlings too far into the ground, they're not gonna have enough energy inside them to actually push all the way out of the soil. And so they'll actually die, you know, still buried. So the next thing I wanna go over is plant spacing. And that basically tells you how much space to give each one of these plants. And it's based on the plant at its full size. So basically if you're thinking if there is a circumference around, like a bubble around each plant, how much space does that plant need? Now there are methods like square foot gardening where you are actually intentionally minimizing the amount of space each plant gets so that you have more yield and that's fine like I love square foot gardening and I I have had really great success with it but for seed packets they will tell you in general how much space each plant needs this is what's called an indeterminate tomato and so it's going to get really really tall and so for this plant you want to plant them 24 inches apart so two feet apart like I said, I like to squeeze things together. I do a lot of like square foot gardening. And so maybe I will shorten that to like 18 inches, but I'll also know like, oh, my plants might, might not get as big. They might not have as much yield, like all of that kind of stuff. And I just have to decide if I'm fine with that or not. But if it's something that I'm brand new to, like maybe I do just like listen to the seed packet <laughs> and do what they tell me to. But that's what that is. So it would basically be um, 24 inches from the center or the stalk of that plant. So if you have one plant here, you would go 24 inches over and then to the next stalk of the next plant or seed that you put into the ground. And then another thing that you'll see on a lot of seed packets, let's see who has it here. Oh, here we go, this one says it. Botanical interest also has row spacing. And so for this one, it says to put a seed every 24 inches apart but then to put your rows every 36 inches apart. And what the row spacing is, it's basically for agriculture. So if you are actually planting things in rows, uh, that is the amount of space that you need in between, not just your plants, but the rows themselves, 
so that you can get machinery through. It's mostly for like industrial purposes, but a lot of people like growing in rows too. And so that is how you can know like, okay, well you can easily get in between these two rows to harvest and things like that. Now, if you're growing in raised beds, your rows are outside the beds, whether that's like an actual raised bed or an in-ground bed, like the rows are outside. And because you're reaching from like all sides of your beds, you can completely ignore the row spacing unless you are actually growing in rows. Another thing that's really helpful on here is the plant size, but some seed companies will actually tell you how tall the plant gets. And so they might for tomatoes say like six to eight feet tall, um, or for like a bush variety, it'll say that it is three to four feet tall. And so that is really helpful when you're putting things in your garden so that you know that you can put uh, tall things where they're not gonna like shade out everything else essentially, or just eat everything else, especially when it comes to tomatoes, unless that's something you're actually trying to go for. Like you're trying to create shade for other things intentionally with your taller plants. But that's really good to know so that you don't end up putting all of your tallest stuff in the front of your garden and then it just like shades out everything else and then nothing essentially grows behind it. And then there is days to maturity. So for this one, this tomato says it's 80 days from transplanting for the maturity date. Now that is really helpful because this one says from transplanting. A lot of seed companies will not actually tell you from transplanting. They will assume you know that, you, that they mean from planting a transplant. And so for instance, if a zucchini squash is 60 days uh, till maturity, for that one, because most of the time people direct sow them outside, they mean from the time you put the seed in the ground. But for something like tomatoes or peppers or something, anything like that, most people are putting transplants out, like seedlings out into their garden. And so they're not counting that six to eight weeks that you had it in your house or in your grow room, they're counting from the time you put it outside to the time that plant actually gives you fruit. And that's not always clear on seed packets. And sometimes that is something that you need to look up. Looking at the number of days you have left in your season and whether or not you can get something to maturity or not. So for instance, there's a lot of winter squash that's like 100, 110 days to maturity. Now, if your growing season is only 90 days, you're gonna have a really hard time and you're gonna be really frustrated that you're trying to grow those things and you never seem to like actually get the winter squash or like the pumpkins never actually finish ripening. If you are in a situation where you have more time in your season, maybe you have a gap in your garden and you're wanting to figure out what you can put in that gap, the days to maturity is really helpful too because you can say like, okay, well, if I have I have 110 days left in my garden season, so maybe I can try to put that winter squash in. Or, you know what, I only have like 70 days, so maybe I should do something more like zucchini that's gonna be faster. The other thing too about frost dates is like sometimes you get surprised and you get a little bit longer in your season. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter. And so it is always a little bit of a risk, a little bit of a gamble. But if you know those dates and you know how many days you have left in your season, then you can make a really educated guess about what would do well in any space that you have that you wanna fill. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about that I've seen on seed packets before, I'm trying to look and see if it's on one of these specifically, but sometimes seed packets will say, plant in early spring. <laughs> or plant outside in late fall. Okay, well, we all agree that spring starts on March 22nd. Well, my garden and my weather on March 22nd is gonna be very, very different than someone who is in Michigan. March 22nd looks very different for them. <laughs> and But it's spring, it's technically spring. And so I find that that's not super helpful. I don't really like when seed companies do something like that because it can be really confusing for new gardeners. And so what you do in that situation is you wanna just look it up on Google. Um, it's an extra step, it's a hassle. Uh, not every seed company does this. Usually they will go weeks before your first and last frost, but I have seen that on seed packets. When they say that on the packet, don't just go by the calendar, you know, spring, summer, fall, like 
don't do it. Actually look it up for that plant on Google. And that brings me to my next point. Because seed companies all put different stuff on their seed packets, like this is another thing that I like is um, botanical interest. They put what a little seedling looks like. That's really helpful if you've never seen a little baby tomato before so that you know that what is popping up is in fact a tomato and not a weed. When you can't find what you're looking for, because this is three different packs of tomatoes and they all have different categories of information, but sometimes the information itself is different. You can just Google it. I look at whatever comes up on the Google search just so that I know, but I go by Farmer's Almanac. If you have master gardeners near you or you have a university extension office near you um, that has like an ag department, I would look up what they say on their websites because that's super helpful. Farmer's Almanac is just a trusted thing that a lot of people use, but it is really helpful too to see the information that is published from people who live specifically in your area. If you ever can't find anything on seed packets or if you're not sure about it, um, you can always Google it. Hey guys, so it is several days later now and as I was editing this video, I realized that the last part of this for some reason doesn't have audio. And if you have made it <laughs> this far into this video, which is so much longer than I thought it would be, uh, I wanna give you a proper send off. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. If it did give you a little bit of insight or clarity on reading seed packets and how to get the information that you really need from them, please let me know in the comments below. Again, this video is a part of a mini series. I will link the playlist below also, so you can check out the other videos in it. And, and if you have any other questions or any other topics that you want me to add to this series, let me know that in the comments below also. And this playlist could be something that I just kind of add to as more topics come up. I want us all to learn together and I really do believe gardening is something anybody can do. And if there is a way that I can make that easier for you, I'm here for it. So thank you again for taking the time to hang out with me today in my living room. I guess now for multiple days, now that I'm doing this send off, just know that I really appreciate you and I love hanging out with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.